Now we have the main view model with the grouped collection for the drop down. Next thing we want to do is actually create this drop down to bind to that information. So the first place we'll want to start is in the main view itself. So we'll go to the main view XAML, and then we want to edit this expander here to have more of a view. We're not going to work entirely on the UI in this one. We're going to get the binding working, and then we'll style the UI afterwards. But we are going to at least make the correct UI and bind all the data. So there's several things we could use in here. We've first got the border of the pop-up, so we'll leave that in. And then instead of this expander here, we have effectively a collection of a collection. So we have a group which inside it has uh, lists. So we have two collections. So for that, I'm just going to use the most basic form of uh, a list in a sense, a collection, and that's the items control. We could go to items repeater to get more power on other things, but the basic items control is good enough for us. We'll probably dump it all in here first, and then once we're happy with it, similar to the animated pop-up, we'll probably make it a custom control to be reusable. But always just start with hashing it out in the main view and seeing how it goes. So the first step is to bind this first items control uh, to the actual uh, list we just made, which is, I believe, channel configurations, that one. And then in here, we can just do the items control dot item template to specify what each item should look like. And I always just do this for quickness before we get into any kind of binding. Let's just do a test. And you have to wrap that first in a data template. So there we should have now, even in this UI, I believe this is pretty much dynamic. You can see now we have two tests, which is likely the two configuration channels we have. And if we go to the main view model and go to the channels, you can see they are a list of observable grouped collection. So we'll have in it a key and the object itself. So in our main view for the label, we can do binding to the key of the enumerable of our channel configuration. And the I enumerable is effectively the group. It's just converted it to an I enumerable. And now you can see we have the two headers there, which is kind of what we want. We obviously want to style that differently. So now we can go back into uh, an expander, I believe, here. So we can just put an expander back in. Just cut that line a minute. And then we want the expander uh, dot header. And then in here now, we can have, I believe, a want, probably a button. Well, the thing is, the expander already expands and collapses, so actually, no, what we'll want is a grid. And then inside here, we would have the label of the key, which should still be working. There you can see that now. And then we've got, in fact, we don't even need the grid. It's already got the expanded and collapsed icons. So we just literally need the label. I'm forgetting the expander does that for us. So we now have the two lists, but with nothing inside. And inside this area here, we've bound to the channel configurations, which will bind to each single one. So each single element will have a key, which is a string, and items, which is the channel configuration item. And it will be a list of those. So the items will be a list of channel configuration items. So with that in mind, all we need to do then uh, in here, which is the content of the drop down naturally, so this is where the elements go. We can put another items control, and similarly, we'll do an items control dot template, and then in here we'll do a data template, and then here we'll put a label, and for now, just again test. And that's not currently worked, and that's because we haven't bound anything here. So now we do items here. is binding and if we just do binding it should automatically bind because of the way i enumerables work or in the way that the group collection has worked binding to the key it will have automatically items in it that are enumerable so we don't need to specify uh, items for example we can just literally specify the binding to the class itself and you can see there we have two and three which is the right number of elements 
let's just test if we did write items. I'm pretty sure the property on the grouped collection would have items in. Yeah, so it's the same thing. You can do key and items, or you can just leave the items out, and it defaults to that anyway. In here now, what will be um, an element is a channel configuration item. So you can do binding, and we should have IntelliSense, which we do. So we can do, for example, short text, uh, the main text, which is what we want. So if we bind to main text, we should now get the actual text we want. And now we need to handle when you're actually clicking these things, they need to be buttons. So instead of a label, we'll change it to a button. And now they don't look right, but we now have a clickable button. So we've got the content already. And then we will want now to bind to a command. Now, one of the pitfalls you want to make sure you don't fall into is when you're making view models and you have, say, a list, or in this case, like a grouped collection, and you have the single items, you don't want these items having, which is what most people do, an event on them or a command on them that is like, this item has been clicked, and then do something with this item. Because what you end up doing then is having to pass the parent down into this child for the child to say, parent dot, you know, selected item equals this. The problem that causes is your child items end up needing your parent item to be passed into the constructor. So instead, the actual click event for when an item is pressed, we have put on the top level view model. And now it's our job in the UI to make this button that is an item inside that list travel back up until we get to the main view model and bind it to this command. That way the work of finding out which item was clicked and invoking the command on the parent is done by the view instead of the model, which is what you want. So our job is to tunnel back up to this channel configuration item pressed. And bear in mind this is using MVVM toolkit. So the actual command for this will end in the word command. Uh, so make sure we add the word command, otherwise this won't fire. And to bind to a command, we just do command and binding. Now, we know the name that we want, which is channel configuration item pressed command. At the minute, that would try to find it on a channel configuration item. So the trick is getting to the parent. In WPF, this would have been a little bit more tricky but in Avalonia I believe if we look at data binding they have the ability with a nice kind of a CSS selector to do this kind of hashtag other for a name and I believe they've also got one for parent so binding to parents so you can go to parent by just parent tag which is one up you can do Go to the parent by indexing, which I presume will go up, you know, X amount of items. Or you can go to the parent of a specific type of control. Or you can combine the indexer and type. So with that in mind, we should be able to do nice and easily here, dollar parent. And what we will do in here is, this is where we are. So we're in the single group of information here in the view model. If we go up a parent, we will end up in the channel configurations binding. But we want to go one more where we're out of the way of all this, which are the minute is border. But if we played it safe and tunneled up to animated pop up, that would get us to whatever the data context is on this control, which would be the main view model. So to play it safe, because we know it's always going to be in an animated pop-up for now, we will do in here, uh, controls, call animated, animated pop-up. And then in there, because this will get us to the control, we need to go back into the data context, which is now the view model. And then from that, we can get the command. So it looks a bit messy. But that should tunnel our way up to the command. And we can check that by going to the view model, putting a breakpoint here, 
and just so we don't need an item passed in at the minute let's just null that out and let's try and run this so on click you can see now we've got into the correct command which is good and you can see here now we need the item that was clicked so we remove that null now because we will require it and to pass an item into a command you use the command parameter and the binding for that is literally just binding we want this channel configuration item that the button is bound to so if we run that once more we should find now we have a click event that actually works and passes in this specific buttons uh, data context which will be say stereo here so the item now you can see is the stereo item so that should be all the binding done and you can see it does nothing at the minute it should actually set the selected configuration correctly which it's doing but we now need to close the menu which for some reason isn't working and actually I know why we haven't bound this to anything yet so the channel configuration list is open we'll need to actually be bound to the animated pop-ups open uh, because that's what open and closes the pop-up we haven't actually bound anything yet so if we bind that to the channel configuration list is open and let's just chuck in say on the title somewhere uh, where is the title title bar we have here let's just put another one in and bind this to the channel configuration list is open so we should be able to see if this channel configuration list is open is actually being set so you can see it says false at the minute we open that should have changed to true because the menu is open but it's not clicking this is also not changing anything so this binding isn't working at the minute for some reason and why would that be we are setting that effectively oh we're always setting it to false let's just toggle this at the minute to um equals true to see if the binding's working so we're always trying to set it to false when it's open we want to see if at least the button is working and the text is working yes yeah, so there you go the binding to the button and the command is working it's just the pop-up menu isn't working so it's something to do with our oh i know what it is already actually uh, the animated pop-up this is one way binding at the minute so oh well yeah yes and no this will bind open to channel configuration list but say we close the channel configuration list effectively close the menu this open should also bind backwards so say this is now open this should have been changed to true because in our animated pop-up we update the open to actually open but this is by default a one-way binding so let's just change this to two-way to start with so whenever open inside of an animated pop-up changes so does our channel configuration list so now we should see our text update here when the menu opens which we now do uh, and now we've got a crash collection was modified uh, where are in rendering so something in rendering is firing probably an infinite loop uh, render will it be override render I know we do a few overrides so there's only two places we override render uh, one is in this view model which does actually change a UI element which is not good and the other one is in the animated pop-up which doesn't directly change an element so that one should be safe but this one we shouldn't really be doing any changes to UI elements in the actual render call so for that we should just chuck it on another dispatcher thread and invoke it to be called later 
Otherwise, the loop for the render thread will get stuck in an infinite loop because we are changing the UI thread on the, the loop effectively. So that should fix that crash, hopefully. Yep, there you go. And now when we open, the two-way bindings now working and our animated pop-up is correctly set in uh, the channel configuration list is open. So now does this work to close it? No. Well, it does change the property, but it doesn't actually close the menu. So we're getting somewhere. So there must be one other bug somewhere else. So let's take a look in animated pop-up. And we probably want to take a look at open. That's the main thing going on. So when we are setting open to false, uh, that would change. If it's true, it does this. We don't care about for now. If it's false and it has opened, which it should be, should update the desired size and update the property. So I can't see an issue at the minute. So click. It runs, it is open, it updates the size, it updates the property to false, but then nothing happens. So what's the difference between when we click the underlying control then? Because that's the one that does the close at the minute. So we call begin close. Begin close sets open to false, which is exactly what we're doing. Ah, yeah, and it updates the animated property. There's the problem. So the begin close is running update animation. And all we're doing is setting the open. So instead of doing update animation in each of these calls, um, let's just move that out of both begin open and begin, begin close, and then go to the open. Where's the open gone? In here. So whenever we open, if it's true, we do this. If it's false, we do this. And either way, we want to update the animation and then raise the property changed event. So we were missing this, which would then tell it to start the animation again. So hopefully that's all we need to get this to actually open and close on the button correctly. Open. Yes, there we go. So now we have two-way binding. The button can now close the menu. Uh, the side click can close the menu. And now the last thing is... Oh, this is already working. The button now binds to the short text of the selected item, which we must have done that previously. So I don't recall binding that just. Um, main view. Yeah, where is it? Further down. So the content is bound to the channel configuration button text, which is bound, yeah, already to the selected channels short text. So we already did that previously. So that seems to now be working. And what we now have is the correct layout for our data. And we just want to format this grid to now look like this pop-up. So we want to change the headers to be much smaller. And we obviously want to uh, make these buttons kind of full width across and do this little nudge in text. So that's some more UI we'll do next. But at least that's the complicated binding out of the way. All the other kind of binding is going to be super easy. We've kind of tackled the hardest one first with this button. It's pretty much um, about the most complicated binding I think we'll do on this view. So that's it for this one, guys, and I'll catch you in the next.